Hey, everybody. Welcome to yet another episode of Raised on the Radio. Number 50, Patrick Blair in Zoom land. I am the other half of this show. I am Colt Brocado. And you're, see, you're doing the opposite today than I thought you were going to do. I was hoping for this like shirt off montage thing for the 50th episode, and you put a jacket on instead. Like you covered up more. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold in this room. Yeah. Plus, I got to represent Ohio State. They got a big game tomorrow. So, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed at us. We did not really – I thought we were going to wear, like, tuxedos and stepbrothers for this episode 50. We really should have done that. We should have. Uh, we have failed each other and failed the show and <laughs> failed the millions of listeners we have. But I want to ask you something. I, I mean, look, okay. we're, we're, we're regular guys somewhat, I guess. Do you think we're dressed cool enough, according to Machine Gun Kelly? Highly doubt that. No? No. So not if you based were off I, of the rants that he goes on. So if you and I were in a band and we had a show in five minutes and we walked out on stage looking like we do now, it's not cool enough. What kind of shoes are you wearing? Uh, bro, I don't know. Like right now? Hold on. Or if I'm gonna no, 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 I thought you were asking me, you said when, if you're going out on stage, I was wondering if that's what you meant. Like what shoes would I be wearing if I was going out on stage? Not what I'm currently wearing. I'm wearing flip-flops right now because okay. you can't that, see my that, feet. That should have been the simple answer to the simple question. I apologize. <laughs> Are you going to like philosophy classes three days a week now? You like have to think deeply about everything? Yeah, I have to. <laughs> well, I can appreciate that. Um, so you're wearing flip-flops, so no, you are not cool enough. And Absolutely I'll be honest, not. if you were in my band and you walked out on stage in flip-flops, I'd kick you off the stage and tell you to go get some shoes. You know, you know what? It, okay. If I were to look at you right now in your jacket, and I don't know why, but tell me not, – I'm not, I'm not even looking at the Ohio State thing. I'm just looking at the jacket itself. Yeah. If I were to choose a band that I think that you're going to walk out on stage – Don't piss me off. <laughs> don't piss me off because this is intentional. What? What do you got? <laughs> I would say you would be wearing a mask. I'll take, you know what? I'll take that. I'll, I'll I take thought you that. would. No, I thought you I'll would. Take that. I'll take that. However, I wouldn't wear a mask, but it is a, <laughs> it's a, it's a nineties, uh, coach's jacket. Typically that could be seen by new metal gentlemen. Yes. New metal gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen would be wearing them. Yes. Um, well, as long, as long as I didn't upset you too much. No, no, no. I'll take that. I thought you were going to say something weird. That was not weird. That's what I was going for when I bought this jacket. I actually have three of them. Maybe I'll wear nice. the other, one of the other ones for the next show. But uh, yeah, okay. no, it, is, it is, a, is an ode to 90s coaches jackets. And Chino from Deftones wore them. And guys in corn wore Anyway, you, you were right on. So you, like Slipknot, maybe. Uh, okay. Mushroom we'll go, yeah, sure. Which, which, mask, sure. which masked band sure. were you thinking of? I was thinking newer. Whoa. See, now we got to go back. <laughs> like Hollywood Undead? Yeah. Ah, fuck. Well, that's cool. That's fine. I'll take that, too. That's fine. <laughs> they're, they're a new metal homage band anyway, so that's cool. That's not as cool. <laughs> Damn it. I was really hoping you were just going to say Deftones and make me happy, but you didn't. But as we know, you're not a Deftones fan, so I doubt you knew or know what kind of jackets they wore. So uh, I, the only thing I would really know is the, like the music videos that I've seen. So I think Machine Gun Kelly would like this jacket. You think? I think, he, I think he'd be okay with me wearing this on stage. Now, the shoes, I don't know. I'm, I am wearing Vans. But you're also a Nike fan. I've seen, I mean, you are a shoe guy for sure. I, I am a, I'm a sneakerhead. It's kind of embarrassing, but oddly enough, my wife is a sneakerhead. I married a sneakerhead. She also a sne appreciates sneakerhead. So not just like a shoe connoisseur, but a sneakerhead. I mean, sneakerhead's the term on the streets, but I mean, yeah, shoe connoisseur, <laughs> I'll take too. Because you, you know is, all about the streets. She is also a shoe connoisseur. <laughs> she she appreciates a fine pair of Nike sneakers, as I do. Nice. Okay. Well, Machine Gun Kelly does not. Apparently well, you need to be wearing Chucks. Is that what he says? Chucks. Why don't you just play the clip and then I'll get into what he's talking about a little bit. Maybe I can help okay. you out and help everyone else out. All right. It's about a minute long. So here we so go. So let's, let's first, we got to tell, we got to tell people what show this is from. This is very important. We'll get in trouble for this. 
Oh, yeah, that's true. Rock this with what's her name? Allie, Allie Hagendorf. Did I Hagendorf. say that right? Okay. And this I think is a so, yeah. Spotify podcast. Ooh. I can't believe you're letting me play anything from Spotify on this show. I'm, I, you know what? I'm with you, but this, I think this is important. I think let's just play it, play it. So we just, we got to okay. give Allie a shout out. I don't know Allie. And maybe we'll talk about her a little bit too, but we had to, we had to be sure that we <laughs> tell people where this is from. Go. Go. This is very important. The state of rock and roll depends on rock stars. I got to see some fuck you. I have to, I have to see some fuck you in, in, in it. I, I want some attitude, dude. Like this is what, hey, this is what I will tell you. I did work to her and these would wear comfortable shoes on stage every day. <laughs> Your, your fucking Nike New Balance fucking comfy shoes because it makes you feel comfortable. Put on some Doc Martens, you fucking. Put on some fucking Chucks. Put on some Vans. Put on, like, it's not about you. It's about the show. You don't look cool, man. I hate your feet. I hate your shoes. I hate everything about your your comfortable. Rock and roll's not comfortable. It's uncomfortable. It's a metaphor. Your shoes are a metaphor. you. Next question. I f***ing love you so much. Okay. Can I say two things first? Yeah, one that's going to probably really your thoughts one's, because... probably, one's really going to piss you off probably. Okay. So the first one is I've never had a pair of chucks on my feet. Okay. Does that piss you off? For some reason I thought it would. I mean, I think every grown man at some point in their life should have owned at least one pair of chucks, but that's okay. Go ahead. Um, and second, Doc Martens are not the most comfortable shoe ever. Like I have two pairs of Doc Martens and I can, and I wear them like if I'm just trying to look nice or whatever, or you, or supplement them as a dress shoe. However, wearing them on stage while rocking out, I don't think it's going to happen. That was his point. That was his point. Because, because they are uncomfortable on purpose. Well, like you just said, you're going to wear Doc Martens to supplement either a dress shoe or to look nice. However, okay. someone else's mindset behind that would be, I'm going to wear them to look cool. I've seen Machine Gun Kelly wear white Doc Martens on stage. But that's – we got to – so I think you're going to come at this from a different angle, and then I'm going to have my own. So let me, let me, let me tell you what I think about this. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Um, first, he's not wrong. Okay. However, Those shoes are a metaphor. No, just about the fuck you and the looking cool and wanting more out of rock stars, right? He's not wrong about that. Okay. From an industry perspective. Okay. I don't think necessarily that all music fans need their their rock stars to look, and I'm using air quotes here, like rock stars. Okay. So he's half right about that. The problem is this. Machine Gun Kelly is a superstar. You know what I mean? He is legitimately a pop star now. So I don't think guys in mid-level regional touring bands are going to appreciate this millionaire who cruises around in tour buses while they cruise around and beat up shoddy vans who gets to make multiple appearances a week on said podcast, interviews, TV shows, you know, gets radio play, gets to work with guys like Travis Barker and Youngblood and all these people. I don't think they're really going to appreciate his comments. But just know, and I'm, I'm saying this to all of those bands that I just mentioned, just know that he's not wrong, okay? You're going to confront – if you're serious about your band and you're pushing hard, you want to be successful. You, if you have not already, are going to encounter someone along the way that tells you you need to look cooler in the industry. Not just another, not one of your peers, because Machine Gun Kelly, although having more money, having more success, is a peer. You're going to encounter someone in the music industry that tells you to look cooler. I've had it done have to you, me. In the, at a local level, you've had this done to you? Well, look, if you're trying to get beyond the local level, yeah, someone's going to say it. Before I tell you my story, let me, t let me, let me talk about the Warped Tour thing that he's talking about. This is, where he's, this is where I think he's wrong on a few levels. And by the way, the Nikes, he's not talking about the Nikes that I wear. I wear 
I'm not trying to sound like a douchebag. I wear expensive, fashionable Nike Air Max, et cetera, et cetera. He's talking about like $35 Nike running shoes that you can get at famous brand shoes or Marshalls or something. They're worn for comfort. They're not worn for style or fashion. And New Balance, don't even get me started. If you're in a band and you're wearing New Balance on stage, I'm with Machine Gun Kelly. Don't do that. Don't do that. Your, your grandpa wears New Balance, okay? Don't do that. So, so he's right about that. But the problem with his Warped Tour comments, it, it's this. I've done warp Tour, okay? Multiple shows, different places. Um, warp Tour sucks, okay? Here's why it sucks. It's always in the summer. It's always 100 degrees every day you're doing it. You don't play for long. You don't play for a lot of people. It's fucking hot. And if you're not Machine Gun Kelly who tours on a tour bus and gets to go sit in air conditioning all day before he performs, you're out in the heat all day. There's nowhere for you to go to cool off. You're hungry, you're dehydrated, and you have to get up on stage and you have to let people know that, hey, this is the time of my life. Now, I know some people are going to go, suck it up, you pussy. What are you complaining about? I'm not complaining. I enjoyed every moment of it, but in the moment, it sucked. And I had to put on a happy face and I had to pretend like I wasn't miserable, which I was. Okay. So when he's talking about the guys who just want to have their feet comfortable on stage at Warp Tour, those are those smaller bands like mine <laughs> that are not touring Warp Tour in a tour bus. They're touring it in a van. They have no AC. Oh, by the way, they lug all of their gear. They break down all of their gear. They do all the stuff that he's not, he did not do when he was on that tour. Okay. And good for Machine Gun Kelly. He does. Do if you earn that, if you earn the position to do a big tour like Warp Tour, and you're in a bus, fuck. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that he's wrong for doing better for himself. I'm just saying he probably is not thinking about those guys that do that. So the last thing they want to do, like you said, is put on a fucking pair of Doc Martens when they've been sweating through their socks all day, and get up on stage in those. You know. So they put on the comfy New Balance, the comfy Nikes, and they go rock out. And typically these are, uh, I don't even want to say what kind of bands these are. I don't want to piss people off. But so that's what he's talking about, but he's not thinking about why they're doing it. Now, some of them might not just have any style and they just wear those shoes all the time. Okay. But believe me, I, I want Machine Gun Kelly to know and everyone else to know, there are bands out there that want to look cool, but when you're on Warp Tour, it's fucking hard. Because you've been, you're sunburnt. You've got the stupid, the streak of sunblock on your nose. You look like a moron. You're sweaty. <laughs> your clothes are dirty. You don't have a bus to go retreat to and change your outfit and take a shower. You don't have the perks of getting backstage and using the showers because you're a smaller band. Warp Tour has hundreds of bands every year. Play it. Not everyone is on the same level as MGK or any of the bands that tour on buses. So they don't get all of the amenities. So yeah, they want their feet to be comfortable. Uh, and whether they want to, whether they want to take the advice of, Hey, look cooler. I need some fuck you out of you. It's up to them. But those are the guys that are going to be offended by that video. I'm not offended by what MGK said, because I've been there. I've had, I've had, <laughs> go ahead. How much influence or, or how much does that actually matter? So looking cool versus not looking cool on stage I mean, how, how much does that actually matter for a band? If you want to achieve if, if, MGK. If, 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 well, let, let, okay. If you're in, if you're in the crowd and you're looking at a band, are you worried so much about them looking cool or what the shoes they're wearing? If somebody's am I, wearing. Am I personally? If, yeah. Um, well, look. Right, if they're wearing Asics instead of Doc Martens. Oof. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. See, that's what I don't understand. Don't like, do why? that. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't do that. I, I, look, 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 look. If I go to see a band play, say it's, it's a band that I've never seen live before, am I going to stop appreciating that band and listening to their music and seeing them live because the lead singer had on some, some Asics? No. No. However, here's another, however here's another, if he looks okay. cool, if he looks cool, I'm going to remember that. But keep in mind, you're talking to a guy that intentionally bought a jacket because it was 90s. I'm using air quotes there. 
and it looked like a specific era of, of something. You're also talking to a guy that has 12 pairs of sneakers at any given time that I keep clean. And then I, I, it's, a, it's like, it's a hobby almost. Okay. So like I'm an outlier when it comes to this stuff, but I'm also, I've been there before and I appreciate how shitty it is for someone to tell you to look cooler. Now. So MGK and how big he is, what if he were to start wearing new balance on stage? He could start Would he make New Balance cool? Would yeah. people start wearing New Balance because of that? If they weren't dad shoes, yeah. Hmm. I, I'll give you a perfect example. If he wore the Kawhi Leonard's out on stage, because Kawhi Leonard is sponsored by New Balance, and those shoes are terrible, terrible. But if MGK wore them out on stage in some sort of major appearance and people saw it, yeah, I guarantee people would pick up on that. Now, are we talking are about saying- rapper MGK? Or are we talking about pop punk MGK? There's a big difference. Oh, gee, the there. fact the fact that that matters drives me nuts. Well, look, but that's his position too. That's what makes his position in this so unique is that he's coming from hip hop, where you fucking dress to kill in hip hop. You do. You try to look fresh every time you get on stage, every time you make an appearance, everywhere you go, right? A pop punk kid has a certain style, and it's sort of I don't give a fuck, but it's also I'm not trying to give a fuck, right? Yeah. Machine Gun Kelly is trying to say, you need to give a fuck about what you look like. Okay. So I'll tell you. So, and again, I'm coming from a place where I've, I understand I've been, so I once was told by an a r for a record label that basically my entire band needed to look cooler. He was complimentary. And then one of the things that wasn't so complimentary was you need to look cooler. And he basically, I'm going to be on my deathbed and I'm going to remember, remember what he said. He goes, your fans can't show up to your show looking cooler than you. Okay. Now that sounds douchey, especially for someone I just met to tell me that sounds like a dickhead thing to say. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. I guess it, it depends on what your thought is about what the definition of cool is. Make it your own. So, so that's the thing too, is like, don't try to mimic someone else's style. Just come up with your own thing and just do it and do it with confidence. And believe me, someone like MGK is going to look at you and go, he's rocking it. He doesn't give a fuck. Right. So, so when you were told that, what did you do to change? I cried. <laughs> um, now, uh, because I'm I pers- sure that made you look really cool well I'll be honest with you I personally didn't change anything because I, I, feel, I felt like he wasn't talking to me I felt like he was talking to other members so really? there was that uncomfortable band conversation that had to be completed where we sort of discussed who doesn't look that cool I hated having it but it happened. How did, how did I guarantee it? you, I guarantee you most bands of any genre have had this conversation at least once. I guarantee it. I don't care how fucking metal you are. I don't care how fucking punk you think you are. I don't care how fucking street you think you are. You've had this conversation at some point or someone has said it to you. It, it's just, it's happened. It's a shitty thing. It's fucking materialistic and it's petty and it's shallow, but so that's why he's not wrong because I think he's – well, I'll, I, that's why I think he doesn't think he's wrong is because he's coming from hip-hop over to ro- the world of rock and roll, already being in a position where he's, he's also been a fashion model, dude. So he also gets gifted high-end fucking clothes that the average Joe like you and I that live in the Midwest aren't going to see on a regular basis. You know? Okay, so – my thing is, is like watching this video and how intense he is with this. It seems like he's talking at someone specifically. Do you get that? I mean, I think specifically when he brought up the warp tour thing, I think he, he was talking to, he was, well, look there when he was on warp tour, there were a lot of people that thought he shouldn't have been on warp tour in the, okay. the world of the internet. There were a lot of 
metal guys and metal publications and rock publications wondering why the fuck was he there? But those same people wondered why the fuck was Eminem on Warp Tour way back in 1998 or whatever it was. Worked out okay for Eminem, huh? That was probably a good <laughs> idea by his record label to put him on Warp Tour. And it's working out okay for MGK so far. So I, I think he's sort of subconsciously talking to those people and talking to that, those, uh, the, the, the tastemakers, if you will, of the world of rock and the world of metal that sort of don't think he belongs. I mean, the dude wears fucking, the dude, did you see his performance on the late night show? It was, I, I meant to send it to you. Did I not send it to you? He did like so. a medley of songs all by himself. He was one man band. He had a loop machine. He was playing piano. He was playing guitar. Oh yeah. Played, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. He played a pink piano for fuck's sake. So can you blame these guys who have been grinding it out in vans for years? being a little bit upset about a guy who showed up to a performance playing a pink piano, wearing pearls, wearing all pink, telling them that they're not cool enough. I get it, but he's not wrong, you know? But I think he was, again, I think he was talking to those people. But he also feels like he's reached a level where what he's saying doesn't necessarily matter or doesn't necessarily mean anything for him, probably, right? What do you mean? Like he can pretty at the level he's at, he can pretty much do or dress like or whatever, however he really wants at this point. Verse in, but he's talking down to people who aren't in that level or aren't at that level or aren't in that position. Yeah, no, I mean you could definitely consider that to be um, talking down to you, because I guess in a way he was, because it was very sarcastic and, but. I, I, I mean, I mean, look, if, if I was in a, if I was in a band right now and I felt he was talking about me, I, I would quietly, quietly wouldn't say anything. <laughs> I wouldn't get on the internet and leave comments on the video. I wouldn't do it, but I would quietly say, guess what? I do have some fuck you and me and fuck you, by the way, you know, I, I, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> he's, it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I get what he's saying, but I, I, but I also understand why people would be upset. I think he was talking, uh, I think you're right. I think he had a specific group of people in mind, and I think it was, he probably had a bad experience on Warped Tour, to be honest with you. It probably also didn't don't go know, great. We also don't know what, what you might have. I don't know if you actually listened to this whole podcast or not, but we don't I know don't. just from this clip what led into that like what her question was that led into that was it specifically warp tour what or you know where where that whole rant came from we don't really know so it's kind of um, like taken out of context i well it's almost not because he's been this isn't the first time he said something like this about rock and roll and there needs to be more rock stars and he's been saying this for a while okay um but he's not the only one there are several people within the, the rock and the sort of rock community. And I don't know if that's too vague of me to say, but within the rock community, like that work for magazines that work for websites that write for them. And that sort of feel like the, the day of the rock star is dead. You know, I remember reading an article. I may have been, I, I don't remember who it was by. It could have been spin. It could have been rolling stone. I don't, I don't know. But at the time they said, yeah, the day of the rock, it was sort of saying like rock star, the idea of a rock star, that whole look and everything is dead. And they put like a side-by-side -side comparison of a picture of like Axl Rose and then Daughtry. Jeez. At the time though, Daughtry was huge. He had that song and he was, he was huge. Yeah. And then I think like they used Chad Kroger from, how do you say his name? From Nickelback. Um, and maybe someone else. So look, a uh, fair comparison, I guess. But does Chad Kroger need to walk out on stage in his underwear with a fucking fur coat on and Doc Martens <laughs> to, 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 you know, to sell Nickelback to people? No. But that's what made Axl Rose stand out above the rest. Because not yeah. everyone has the confidence to walk out on stage in white underwear in a black fur coat and black boots with high white socks and a bandana and Dude, the dude just exudes, he just exudes confidence still to this day. And he's a fat fuck. He's had 
15 facial sur- like plastic surgeries. He still is the most confident fucking guy you're going to see on stage. You know, that's just him. You know, not everyone needs to be like that, but you should pay attention, I guess. Pay attention. This is why people adored him. <laughs> don't give a fuck. Like MGK, MGK is saying, don't give a fuck. So I, f- I feel like a few of your past bands could have made it if you just did the underwear thing. Thank you. <laughs> so you're insinuating that we didn't make it, which also is, is insulting as well. So you, that's a twofer. That's what they call a twofer. Well, okay. That's a good question. So what do you, what do you consider by, uh, how do you consider making it? I, I don't know, man. Cause right now you're sitting in your basement talking to me. <laughs> a threefer. <laughs> but no, but no, in, in all honesty though, what, what do you, what do you consider making it? So you're saying I shouldn't be in this basement talking to you doing a podcast. I should be out on the road playing shows. Well, you probably wouldn't be on the road now because of COVID, but. Okay. I thought you were about to go for a four for. <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm going to leave it at a three for this time. Thank you. Um, but that, isn't that what you would consider making it? Look, if I had my way, yes, I'd prefer at this point in my life because I'm still – while I'm getting older, I'm still young, I guess. I would prefer to be earning my living out on the road, playing shows every day. Absolutely. I'm not. But I don't know. I don't know what I consider. Look, did I ever achieve MGK level success? No, I didn't come anywhere close. Did I get to go do cool shit? Yeah. And I don't think – Look, right. I, everyone has their own idea of making it. My idea of making it was always I just want to be playing music as my career full time. I want to be, and, and I don't have to, again, it was never about getting rich. It was just, I wanted to be, I want to feed myself, you know? And I did that for a long time. Um, I don't know, but, but you have to, well, you have to understand too. It's, it's a lot of this stuff is right place, right time, right people, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I don't want to talk poorly of anyone I've ever been in a band with, but I don't think it was the right people in the same band. It eventually got to a point like all bands that it's just, we couldn't do it anymore together. You know, it just happens. Well, okay, um, this might be, this might sound like a douchey question, but like with the career that you had, were you fulfilled by that, the career that you had? I mean, of course you would still like to be doing it if you could be on the road and things like that. But like, I don't know. It just seems like a career where you're kind of fulfilled by, by doing it. Like it, you, you're always, it's in, it's an in the moment kind of thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't regret anything. And I think I had a, like I said, I did a lot of cool stuff and had a lot of fun and I can, I'm still doing it. Like I'm going to record a song in two weeks. I'm going to put it out and I could spin it in a way and I could treat it in a way, promote it in a way I could make a little bit of money off of it just from streaming it and all that stuff. Okay. So, so I'm not not, angry that I didn't know you were doing this. I don't want it to be past tense. Like I'm always going to be playing music. I'm always going to be putting stuff out. Now, whether I ever tour again, it's unlikely, but play shows again. Sure. I'll play a show again. Uh, You know, I'm not going to live in a world. I'm not going to have my son live in a world where I'm not playing music. How about that? Um, and whether he appreciates it or enjoys it, he could, he could, by the time he's an adolescent, he can go, dad, you suck. You suck. You suck now. Stop. (laughs) That's fine. I'm still not going to stop, but that's fine. It's just not his thing. That's cool. Um, but yeah, no, man, I, would I prefer to be someone like an MGK who is just living it up. He's living the life right now. He's living the rock star life. No, I'm not going to say no to that. If you offered me that in five, five minutes from now, I would say yes. Without a conversation with my family being there, I would say yes. <laughs> yes. We'll work out the details later. Yeah, I'll do it. You know? Um, but playing music and, and shows and the way I dress Everything that I do, the, the, the posters you see behind me, 
it's always been a lifestyle of mine. So that's the other thing too, like playing music and doing all, it's just lifestyle for me. It just seemed like inevitable that I would do it and that I'm always going to do it, you know? Um, Are you willing to give out any information about this whole uh, recording a song in two weeks thing? Like where you're recording or anything nah, like that? We'll talk about it later. No one cares. Okay. I do. I'm pissed that I didn't know you were recording anything. I've cryptically been posting on social media. Cryptic. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying what you should know. To, what is that supposed to tell me? I'm not saying that you should know because of that. I'm just saying that's what it is. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'll go back through and look at your cryptic tweets and find out what's going on. Just Instagram. We didn't mention at the top of the show that we do have a guest today. Oh, you do? Yes, we do. He is here. are back for episode 50 of raised on the radio as we mentioned we have a very special guest for this episode justin james coretta how are you sir what's up do you like <laughs> thank you for that i love the enthusiasm <laughs> so early in the morning let's go do you now would you have preferred that i introduce you as like singer songwriter artist what, what do you what, what do you do uh i you know what at this point i would just say solo artist yeah um, but yeah, I've got kind of the same group of people behind me that I've been in bands with, but I would say that the write the writing's all mine. So okay. solo artist, I would say. Solo artist. Okay. Yeah. I didn't I know a hard time. songwriter would have offended you. No. Okay. Hey. Some people hey. get offended by that shit, man. I no, make I'm sure. not. Listen, here's my goal. I want to make some music that people like, and if they like it, awesome. 
whatever people call me is totally up to them. Okay. Well, did I write song? Did I write some songs? Yeah, I wrote some songs. Am I a well, songwriter? Look, yeah, I guess. The song you just released is great. And I actually, and it, we'll, we'll talk about it in a sec. I want, I want to compliment you though. I, I was talking with Colt before we started. Uh, we were trying to, we were logistic, like, sort of strategically, like, how do we want to do the episode? Do we want to do the song in the beginning? Do we want to do it in the middle? You know, and I, I basically said, you know what? I don't think it matters because I think if anyone dislikes this song, they're an asshole. So, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. You know, I'm being <laughs> serious, man. I, I really don't think there's a way to di look if it's like, okay, it's a little too poppy for my taste. Okay. Yeah, but if you go, I hate that song, you're a fucking right. asshole. Right, 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 right. I'm right. sorry. But uh, talk, talk about the song. Tell us about it. What, was, what, is, what are the origins? Get into it. Yeah. So, somebody is basically like, it's a, it's a song about not trying to lose your dinosaur. I don't know if you've seen Step Brothers, but it's very much on the same token of, you know, you need to, it, it's relatable to that new movie that just came out, that soul movie, right? It's Everybody's talking about that. And it is, it's about your spark, right? It's, it's about being somebody because of the things you do and that's who you are. That's what makes you somebody is, you know, fulfilling your you. And that's, what, that's what the song's about. I love that. Sorry, I just had to take off my sweet Crocs I got for Christmas Oof. with all the charms. Oof. Look at that. Oof. He has no idea how the has, conversation It's, it's just almost had. like he knew Everything the conversation we were right. having. You guys talk about Crocs? We talk about shoes. <laughs> oh, right on, right on. <laughs> yeah, so I've got, I've got the Croc and marching band hat game on point. Don't worry about me. That's where I'll go. You know, if I walk into Casey's to grab a slice of pizza, that's what I'm wearing. I, I, here's what I want to do. I, I want to just real quickly, <laughs> let's just start a three-man band. It doesn't matter what it is, what instruments we play, and let's okay, book okay. a show. Let's film it, and let's post it on the internet and at Machine Gun Kelly on every single social media platform everywhere. <laughs> and I want to see what he says about your Crocs, about your hat. I want to know, but... He did mention, you know, it, that's crazy too. He mentioned Step Brothers, which we talked about. We talked about that as well. That's we were going to wear matching tuxedos like we were interviewing for a job. Yeah. And then I was going to fart. But <laughs> that's such a great, that is such a great movie. Like that's oh, my wife so and I, funny. like we can put it on any time. And it's just like one of our, just, we don't have anything else to watch. Let's throw it on and just chill and just laugh. Because I feel like every time I watch it, I find something else yes. that like, I'm either laughing harder at, or I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I miss that? That's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, it really is just, I think it's probably the best movie that those two have done together. I agree. It's, it's, it's one of the, for me, it's like one of the funniest movies. I think for like, if you, if I had a top 10 funny movies, I think it's yeah, in there. Absolutely. Uh, and it was funny too. My wife, the other day, she's like, we were, I don't remember what we were watching. It was a nineties movie though, but she's like, Movies were just funnier in the 90s. Can you name like funny 2000s movies? And I go, Step Brothers, what's wrong with you? She goes, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a few kind of through the 2000s that really like, they were still kind of pushing boundaries. Tropic like, uh, Thunder. Tropic Thunder, 40 year old version. One. Yeah. That was, that yeah. was, Wedding when Crashers. that got released, that was massive. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's, they're there. Yeah. I get the 90s sentiment, though, like, because it's a different style of humor altogether. It, For sure. It, it, so, it, but so is, like, 80s humor. You know, like, as we, as we go through it, people decide, like, what's funny, what's not. And that's just cultural. See, but I have a feeling you're into 90s humor because you put some 90s humor in your song. I may have, I may not have, depending on if somebody writes me a cease and desist letter. <laughs> <laughs> What did you put in the song? Which I thought, okay, was, so, I thought that was perfect for coming out of the chorus, you know, the lyrics in the chorus and the message you're trying to convey in the chorus. Coming into that is perfect. Yeah, so. yeah, so structurally, right, like it makes sense. The song is like, you know, I don't belong here. It's a matter of time before they find another way. It's like you're going into work kind of thing. You can visualize yourself. And I think that uh, so many people relate to that where they're like, fuck, like I don't want to be here, or, you know, even if you like your job, there's days where you're like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. So I've always loved the movie Office Space. I think it's an, in that top 10 category for me. Um, and it's a uh, little clip of Lumberg 
given his, uh, yeah. So I'm going to need you to come in tomorrow and, uh, (laughs) and it's, (laughs) yeah. And it's, is definitely one of those things where you're like, okay, this sucks, but I'm going to do it again. And that's kind of what the second verse is. Um, yeah, not to get too, too in the weeds on it, but I mean, I'll go in as far in as you want with it. I, I don't care about explaining exactly what the what lyrics are. I mean, that's why I wrote them, you know. Sure. Uh, it's funny that it, it actually the lyrics and what the song is about is like a perfect transition from what we were talking about right before you joined us. When you know, Colt, we were talking about we started talking about how MGK said you need to look cool if you want to be a rock star. If you're not cool enough, this and that, and it got into cool, 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 cool. I was telling yeah. stories that I, you know, experiences I had with people in the industry actually saying that to me, like it happens, you know? Um, and then he sort of asked me like in a non insulting way, let me just point that out. Sort of asked me like, <laughs> well, do you feel like, are you fulfilled with your career being over or whatever? Like, Sort of like, hey, you're done. You know, you're 75 years I old. Did, you're I did. I did. Five years and yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this but is I, the I, way Patrick Blair takes things. No, no, no. He it's can't the way take you things. Say things. Um, <laughs> it's the only way you can say it. <laughs> no, but I, I basically said what you just said, Justin. Where it's like, look, I'm my, well. First of all, it's not over because I'm always going to be recording music, putting out music. It's a lifestyle of mine that I took on as a young person that I'm going to have as an old person that I'm going to pass on to my kids if they want it. If they don't. Right. Cool. Um, you know, it's how I fulfill, you know, myself mentally, uh, spiritually, whatever, whatever you want to say about it, man. I do remember like having band talks and being like, Hey, we have to dress like this. And that's a real deal thing where we we thought like, Hey, we, Hey, you're, uh, you're shopping at JC Penny. You better get yourself to pack son because the jeans are skinnier. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yep. And you know, that was a real thing. Cause you know, <laughs> when you're, when you're in the, in a band like that and you're like, I will fucking do anything to give myself some kind of an edge. Yep. Also like that was just like the fit of the day. You know, people are now are wearing like, you know, plain sweatshirts with like some little writing on them. Like that was the skinny jean of the time. And that's what we did. You know, we were just wearing the cool stuff. Right. But now I wear Crocs with, all the charms. <laughs> now you can make that cool. <laughs> like you can, yeah. you can start a trend. You know that, right? Yeah. Basically like after I had my second kid, I decided like, I'm just going to wear whatever I want and that's it. You know, and, and a lot of times I look like a 30 year old dad, like, and that's just what it is. And that's just be yeah. who you are, you know, like, and see yep. Patrick, there's a confidence in that. And he yeah. doesn't have to be in his underwear like Axel Rose. He can be in his I, I get it. You're right. <laughs> no, but I also no. just, I still wear what I want too. That's so the here's the deal. I do think I though that like if you go play a show or you, you are entertaining at some form or fashion, when you get on stage, you are wearing wardrobe. You are an entertainer. You know, whatever that is, is whatever it is. You know, like uh, you could be wearing pajamas, but that's a wardrobe. Like that might be your thing. That might be, might be your shtick. Right. I'm not doing that. I might wear the Crocs though. You never know. Maybe that's what you'll see next time you see me on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and and th- honestly, that that's what MGK was saying. He was basically saying, you need to be like, fuck you. I'll do what I want. He just, he yeah. used the example of warp tour and he saw guys wearing comfortable shoes like new balance and like Nike running shoes. And believe me, I know exactly, you probably know exactly what he's talking about. You can picture have, the type of band, the type of guys wearing those. Yeah. I kind of told Colt, I was like, look, Warp Tour sucks for the bands that play it, for some of them anyway. It's uncomfortable. It's hot. You're dehydrated. You're hungry. You don't have a bus like MGK to go sit in the air conditioning in before you play. So you've right. been out there all day. You're sunburnt. You look silly. You feel silly. The last thing you want to do is put on some Doc Martens and go jump around on a, a concrete stage or a a blacktop stage that's 1000 degrees and right. you know it's just the last thing you want to do so i think mgk was forgetting about those guys not everyone had the tour bus life doing more tours so like but i get what he's saying like like you just said you got to think about it or the conversation will have been had at least once <laughs> so but that is like that's the summer festival thing too though like 100%. there's a whole there's a whole other thing to that like 
you know, there's a bit of, you can't wear a, a coat on stage and expect to not, and expect to be comfortable. Um, I oh, once saw, I once saw CeeLo Green at Lollapalooza and I'm pretty sure you were there. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see CeeLo yeah. play? Yeah. Yeah. It was not great. And it's because he wore some kind of this kiss uniform that was like, looked like fake leather and it is the middle of the day and it was hot middle of the day in the midwest in the summer yes bad idea yeah i don't know it just was not a good idea and i'm sure he had tons of fans on him but like dude had to sit down in the middle of the set and (laughs) don't get me wrong like i i love his voice and he's a he's an excellent performer but like you can't be doing that like you can't wear (laughs) you can't wear like a plastic suit yeah you can but you got to sit down in the middle of a journey cover like that's just what you got to (laughs) do but he's also carrying about i don't know a hundred extra pounds listen i wasn't gonna bring that up (laughs) i'm just saying mgk is 140 pounds wet and wearing boots he could probably wear a coat and get away with it but yeah on that that you guys token there's a there's a fair bit of like you know here is my wardrobe, but also it's got to be somewhat wearable also. Sure. Like you got to be able to perform in it too. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You guys know the band Medina Lake? Yeah. Heard of it. Don't know it. I seen Only. they played point fest and it was like 110 degrees outside and they were in fur coats jumping around like crazy. I, if that's what I got respect for right there. <laughs> See, but again, yeah, that's nuts. But they spent the entire day in a tour bus in air conditioning. So for the, I, I, the, uh, okay. the 25 okay. minutes they, they had on stage that day, they could have started out. But I get it. It's, it's goofy, you know. But that's the difference, Colt. People probably went, I get it. these fuckers are in fur coats. And then eventually five more people said that. And then five more people said that. And then finally, everyone's sort of paying attention. But I don't know. It's I did not pay attention to their shoes, though. They could have been wearing New Balance. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I, think that's so much of a deal breaker. <laughs> if you're if you're like an active band running around on stage, like yeah, wear the most comfortable shoe you possibly can. I get it. I get or, it. Or you know, put some inserts in your vans. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like that's just the way it is. I guess I have a pair, and I wear them sometimes because at the end of the day, I'm like, man, my back hurts a little bit. I'm gonna need to slip on these Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just think he, he was talking about a specific genre of music i think more than anything and, and it makes look, sense but the, the, those those guys have the i don't give a fuck and the i don't give a fuck is i'm gonna fucking be comfortable right you know um so where did who recorded the song where did you record it uh so it's got a little bit of a trickle journey i went with to gerald's house and we were recording something else that i had been writing Tell, tell, more, our, tell our listeners who Gerald is. Okay, Gerald Dusek is an old friend of mine. I used to play in bands with him. Uh, he used to be a guitarist for The New Translation um, and City Avenue. And, you know, he's just a really great friend of mine. Um, it, incredible musician. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody write a hook easier than that guy, I will say. And if you can, whoever's listening to this, go check out his music because he's got a couple of EPs out that are so underrated they're so good really well written anyways he's got a little home studio and you know we we both also play a a cover duo where we play like 90s 2000s ish stuff so i'm over quite a bit or i was before uh you know what and so i went over there to record this kind of heavier tune similar to like city avenue ish and i had this idea for the verses that are actually what somebody is now. And I started playing it and Gerald just started getting into it and it kind of took off and we were like, all right, we're going to focus into this end up. Gerald plays drums on that. Actually. I had, of course, my twin brother, Al, who you guys know, I don't know that guy. You don't know him is Al. He looks like me. (laughs) Um, and, uh, a few bands before. He's been in some bands, maybe all of them. I think I was saying at least most of them. At least ninety-five percent of them. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, he played bass on it for me, and I'm lucky to have a brother and a friend like that that are as musically inclined, um, and I can bounce things off of. So I recorded with him, and uh, 
man, I was like really, really excited. And Gerald pretty well produced a lot of the um, transitional things on that track. Uh, he helped me out a lot with that because he's just, he's just really great at it, honestly. Like he, he, he does the producing thing very well, but you know, that's what it is. Yeah. And uh, so I get the track together and then I end up starting to talk with uh, Mike Bivens about future projects. And so through that, I knew I was going to do some more tracks with, with him. So I decided to take it to Mike to do the mix down and we actually added a bunch of vocal parts as well. So this is kind of like a collaboration between the two, you know, Gerald and Mike kind of as producers and Mike is the mixing engineer, but all tracked over at uh, Gerald's house. So, cool. Yeah. It's a basement recording with, you know, some frills. Sounds some. fucking great. It's cra it's crazy to me. The, the people, especially around St. Louis right now that are recording in their houses or in friends' houses or in basements or whatever. And you, you can't tell the difference between that or a studio recording. I mean, maybe you guys can because you're more in depth in the, you know, in that lifestyle, but I can't, I can't tell a difference. Yeah. I think it just depends on the elements you're looking for. Um, I know. And it, of course, like I'm, I hired Mike as a producer to do specific things too. Like um, he, has a really good knowledge of production of a certain certain kind, right? Like you approach producers to that that have already like had some kind of a flavor out that you're into and that you want to pursue. And that's why I came to him because I wanted to kind of dive into that a little bit more than the straight up rock pop stuff. So in the future, you'll hear probably more synth stuff that are, but still like in the same vein as what somebody kind of feels like what is the sound at the very beginning of the song um what is that I, from the clocks and stuff yeah but there's like a distinct like one no i don't know what it is there's one noise that like sticks out over the top of it all or maybe it's like at the very very beginning of the song so there's like a real sound Right, like when you okay. turn like a movie projector on yeah. or a film projector, that, and it's like just okay. a tape, it's like a tape reel, like okay, starting up, okay, just some goofy sampled stuff. Music yeah. magic. You it's know, fun what, though. Yeah. If I perform it on stage, I'll just go <laughs> and see if that works. Yeah. <laughs> so you got uh, more songs in the works that you're going to be releasing soon. I do. Later, how how soon we we looking at we looking we're looking for. The plan has kind of been like shifting with coronavirus and stuff, but the timelines have kind of shifted. I mean, this stuff actually was supposed to come out last year as far as my plan was, but you know, I've been letting it just be what time it is for it to come out. Now the sure. second track that I'll be putting out, my, my hope is that we'll get it out towards the end of February. So okay. we'll have a second track out pretty soon. Also, um, there should be a live performance that I did right here, actually, uh, of, a, of another song. So it'll be a new song kind of debuted. It's not like professionally recorded or anything, but it's just me and uh, me and an acoustic guitar. So I'll try what I'm going to try to do is put out a like a track on Spotify, give you know, people a video of me playing something acoustically and then another track and then another acoustic recording. So I just want to have a bunch of stuff to be putting out so people can kind of just choke it down you know just really oh, yeah. give it to them where can people sure. listen plug all of your you're everywhere right oh it's everywhere man i use that distributor that puts it everywhere you can go on tiktok and find me whoa i mean you can't found you on instagram did you yeah you found me you're in the, you're in the story reels there you can find your music on instagram how cool does that feel it's really cool there's a few distributors that make it super easy to just put the music on there and it just loads up onto every single platform right. you could imagine. And also you can do it like the lyric uh, kind of thing where it actually will show you the lyrics of the song. And it's cool, man. It, it's what a time to be alive. I'll tell you. Well, I'm going to say this, <laughs> all you fuckers out there that stream music, go buy the song. All right. Just go buy yeah. the fucking song. Like I you did. can do that. Yeah, go buy the song. Yeah, buy music. Buy the song. 
Yeah, I bought the song. Oh dude. my gosh, dude, I didn't know that. See, that's the reaction you get, Cole, <laughs> from buying music. For, from a guy who put out the song, he just expects you to stream it. Yeah, I bought it, man. Dude, I bought my I friend's am, music. I am honored. Thank you so much. Everyone, that means go a buy lot it. to me. That means a lot to of me. Of course, dude. It's a great fucking song. I'm going to buy it. If I like yeah. something, I'm so, going to buy it. So, fun fact. It's a fun fact. I'm assuming that you bought it off of iTunes, correct? I did. So, 99 cents, right? Yep. I think that's what I put, whatever it puts there on automatically. The amount of streams that I've gotten so far is equivalent to the payment for that one purchase that you made. It's not, you know, it's not a lot. You know, yep. you think about it, you're, you're really not getting paid down that much. And of course, like, I don't do this to make millions of dollars, clearly. Like, I'm doing it because I love to make music. It's still bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a hard, it's hard to swallow when you really crunch the numbers. And, yeah. you know, I don't have – it's not $0 invested into this kind of thing, you know. No. It's, it's, this is not a, a cheap thing to do. Um, so if you can purchase it, I – You can. Everyone can. I love can. you so much. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. If you can't and you just want to stream it, I'm grateful as well. Are you and you did say before we got started that you actually do listen to the pod. So thank I do. you. We want to thank yeah. you. Yes, so we do, do appreciate listen, that I'm very sure much. you've heard me go on my Spotify rant, so I'll won't do that today. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with that. But go buy the song, Colt. You got anything else, man? Before we get out of here, can people buy our podcast? Is that a thing? <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's unreal. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I really do appreciate Absolutely, it. Yeah, man. dude. Thanks, thanks, thanks for, coming, thanks for coming out. Again, people, go check out Justin James Coretta. The song's called Somebody. You can find it everywhere because it's 2021, and that's the way things are. But buy it. You can buy it. Justin, thanks, dude. We Thank appreciate you. you. I want to straight for you.